Hi, in this video, we'll talk about haptin. Now, haptin are small molecules with relatively simple chemical composition, which are not immunogenic. They're, they cannot itself uh, create an immune response, but they might create an immune response when they're attached or conjugated with a carrier. Point to be noted that the carrier might be immunogenic itself or might not be. Now we know anything that binds to the T cell receptor or the B cell receptor which is membrane bound antibody is known as an antigen. Now antigens can bind to the T cell or B cell receptor but not necessarily they would evoke an immune response. So T cell receptor and B cell receptor binds to the specific epitope of an anti antigen, right? Now on the other hand side, those antigens which can bind to the T cell receptor or B T cell receptor and can evoke an immune response, those are known as immunogens. So that is how immunogens are differentiated from antigens. Now haptins are not immunogens by themselves because haptins are too simple. You know, when the antigens are going to be presented to the T cell receptor, they have to be served on the platter on MHC class 2. Now MHC class 2 has a peptide binding groove that binds to 16 to 18 residues long amino acid. Now let's say the haptin like this which is basically a benzene ring like structure it's like too simple to be specifically bind to the groove of the MHC class 2 and presented as an antigen. So it hardly binds with specificity in the MHC class 2. Whereas peptides derived from several pathogen which has a length of 16 to 18 residues can easily bind to MHC class 2 peptide binding groove and can be presented to the T cell or B cell receptor. And if they are able to activate T cell, then they are going to elicit an immune response and they would be known as immunogens. But haptins alone cannot do that. So that is why haptins are so simple. They cannot activate T cells. They cannot activate T cells because they fail to bind to MHC and to be presented to the T cells. So that is why they are not immunogens by themselves. But haptin can't be an immunogen or they can be. It turns out that haptin can be an immunogen when they're only conjugated with an adduct and form an adduct. And this experiment was done by Carl Landsteiner, where simply he injected a rabbit with a, a putative haptin. So this is a symbol of the haptin we are using right now, and saw that in the rabbit uh, bloodstream, there is no antibodies raised against this haptin. Now, then he injected the uh, rabbit with a specific carrier, a relatively complex molecule, which is able to bind to the haptin, but he first only injected the carrier and saw there is antibodies raised against the carrier. And when he injected the rabbit with a combination of both haptin and the carrier, a totally different antibody is raised, which is against the adduct, the carrier and haptin adduct. So it turns out that antibodies or immune response is going to be generated only when haptin is conjugated and forming an adduct. A live example. Let's just take a live example. So we know that contact dermatitis is formed by poison ivy, right? So when poison ivy is uh, sort of uh, touching your skin, then an active molecule known as urushiol is going inside. Now urushiol is nothing but a benzene derivative, so it is pretty simple in structure. What happens is when urushiol goes in, it's an alcoholic form which is getting oxidized inside the screen to form quinone derivative. And this quinone derivative is highly, highly reactive. Now, this quinone derivative interacts with the endogenous skin proteins and form a haptin adduct. This haptin adduct, this urushiol haptin adduct could be recognized by specific Langerhans cells and dendritic cells sitting in the skin nearby and they can be presented to the T cell and this urushiol adduct, not urushiol itself, can elicit a 
immune response. And this kind, this particular molecule is involved in delayed type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. If you haven't watched that video, the link is given in the description. So that is how we understand that haptin, when conjugated with proper carrier, can elicit immune response. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I need some motivation. Please like guys. Thank you.